So a friend of mine recently forwarded me the remnants of an old discussion board thread about marriage. The particular website where it was hosted is now defunct and the thread has been deleted, but some enterprising fellow saved a copy of all the best comments in a text file. I estimate the thread is probably 15 years old, but it contains some of the best comedy gold you'll ever read on the topic of marriage and is as relevant and reliable as anything written today. And it contains not only comedy, but words of wisdom, anecdotes, short stories, and a range of emotions from anger and resentment resentment to despair and humour and even passive acceptance that perhaps your marriage isn't all it was cracked up to be. And you can understand why, given the thread was titled Married Men, Post Here If You Hate Your Life. Now a few caveats. This is not meant to be an advertisement for MGTOW, nor is it an anti-marriage message. I'm perfectly aware that there are a lot of happily married men out there, and I'm not trying to dissuade anyone from getting married if that's what you want to do. To the ladies, you might think some of the comments are crude and unnecessarily generalise women in negative ways, and you would be right about that. But I'm not presenting this as some objective truth about what it's like to be a married man. I've cleaned up some of the language where I didn't think it added to the humour, and no doubt some of the men that posted here are or were bitter and resentful. Some have just realised they were naive with regard to the expectations of marriage, and others have very legitimate gripes. So if you don't think any of the generalisations here apply to you, well there's no need to be offended by them then, is there? Now I have enough material here for probably three videos, so if you like this one, let me know in the comments and I'll post the others. And one more thing, I didn't know whether to read the comments or just display them so you can read them, because the voice in your head is often funnier. But if you're annoyed by my reading, I suggest just turning down the sound and reading them yourself. Anyway, let's get to it. First up, some humour. A woman is like a vampire. She will suck the joy out of you and leave you a shriveled husk of a man. But she must. That's how she survives. Getting married is like agreeing to live in a vampire's coffin for all eternity. All married men who are sober are miserable to one degree or another. Successful marriages are made by the man convincing himself he's not as unhappy as he knows he is. Question. Why do men die before their wives? Answer. Because they want to. I used to have friends, till I got married. I used to have fun, till I got married. I used to have money, till I got married. Someone get me a gun. I'd rather be buried. They eat while the man is at work. They're like the Terminator going after food instead of Sarah Connor. They never stop. They can't be reasoned with. In a similar thread a while back, some guy describes his obese couch potato wife as a piece of furniture that talks and never shuts up. Marriage is like serving time in prison with a big fat cellmate who doesn't want to have sex with you. I'm tired of fucking by a script. We're allowed to fuck in certain positions that are to come in a certain order. There are to be no deviations from the script, ever. It goes without saying there are no blowjobs in the script. It bores me to tears. I'd way rather jack off, which is pretty much what I do these days. If I jack off, at least I can fantasize about some fucking variety. A comedian did a bit once about men and women. Men are like dogs. You know exactly what they like, what they want, and how they'll react to whatever you do. Women are like cats. There's no fucking way to tell what they want, and if you do one thing one day, there's no guarantee they'll react the same way the next time you do it. The one-dimensional zero-experience assholes who say, suck it up and be an alpha, have no idea how fucked up women can get. The poster who said you never really let them in your head or heart anymore is exactly right. Of all the people I wanted to be able to relax and let my guard down around, it was her. Now she has no clue what I am ever thinking. Women can remember and produce during the next argument shit you told them from 15 years ago. That's what they do all day. Memorize what you've told them. Guys do it with baseball stats. Women do it with your own words. Readying them like ammo for the next round of torture. Women are essentially a depreciating asset like a car. They go down in value. And even worse, there's a 50% chance they will take your assets. Would you own a car that had a 50% chance of reducing your net worth by 50%? Think of a car like a Lexus. Get a new one every three years or 36,000 miles. Whichever comes first. The last time my wife and I had sex two weeks ago, during the humping phase, she comments, When you get done, can you take a sock and clean the cobwebs off the ceiling? Jesus Christ, that's depressing. Whilst marriage sucks, having American kids with a dumb American wife is the absolute worst. 
Marriage is like a boring dinner that lasts your whole life with the dessert at the beginning. I'm finally tired of what my wife is doing to herself physically. I feel my choices are to leave or have an affair. I think I'd prefer the affair. Then if she finds out, we will have broken up because I had an affair, which somehow seems more palatable than saying we had a divorce because she got fat. Ever see the old Twilight Zone where the little boy has psychic powers and he can torture and kill anyone with a thought? That's the power no-fault divorce gives to any woman you are foolish enough to marry. How many people can be trusted with that kind of power? Women have no idea what they want. They need to be told and controlled. If you are too nice or become apathetic, you are fucking doomed. Either way, if you get married, you are doomed. Women are absolute masters of mental torture and abuse. If we simply hired bitches to interrogate and torture all captured terrorists, the war on terror would be over in less than a year. I'm the one who works, but she can't keep up her end of the bargain either sexually or in terms of housework. I run four times a week and she inhales dove bars. That's actually my favourite of the lot. After over two decades of anecdotal quasi-scientific research, about six out of seven marriages suck warm, chunky shit through a straw for the man. One in seven are good. Those are pretty much your odds. Six out of seven for a lifetime of sexless hell, illogical bitching and nagging, and furtive, stolen, adulterous moments leading to her getting half your shit. Bigamy is having one wife too many. Some say monogamy is the same. (laughs) I've tried like hell to talk things out with my wife. All she does is bitch and complain and say it's all my fault. Screw her. I dream of the day when we drop our youngest off at college. As we turn to get in the car, I'll be making a mad dash for the nearest taxi and head directly for the airport with a one-way flight to the Caribbean. See ya, bitch. Men thought that marriage was the deal that the vows and written contract said it was. Little did they know that the vows had nothing to do with it and that the real contract was the one festering in the pea brain of the evil sow they were tying the knot to. About six out of seven women believe it is their right to trap a man and then gain 70 to 100 pounds. Why should I be sexy? Sexy takes work. And I already made him say he loves me no matter what. But don't believe my figures. Do your own count at the mall. This section I like to call Buyer's Remorse. My marriage is destroying me. I don't know if I can ever regain my happiness. Thinking back on my life the other day, I realised I was actually a happy person once. I loved life. I enjoyed other people's company. I had hopes and dreams. It almost startled me to realise that was me instead of another person I was jealous of. Most of us don't talk things out before because things are ideal. You have a lot of sex and you do what we want. So what's to talk about? We were young and stupid and didn't realise the wedding cake was laced with Dr. Jekyll's secret formula. She changed after marriage. I guess once they have that claim on half your stuff, they lose the incentive to hold back from grinding you down into a pulp of misery. First couple of years of marriage were okay. But then her inner bitch surfaced. Now it's just one long monologue of pain. Bob and Cindy just got a new minivan. Cindy thought they needed it because she wants to have three kids soon. When are we going to have kids? Do you like silver minivans? I think silver's a great colour for a family car. I want two girls and one boy. Do you think we'll be able to afford a private school? Or are you going to have to get a better job? Silver goes with my black outfits. Have you fixed the door squeak yet? And on and on and on. I am really fucking stupid. I didn't marry because I thought I'd get pussy all the time or anything like that. I married because we were best friends and we could talk about anything. Actually, all we can talk about now is how I need to make more money to buy more shit I don't want and nobody in the world needs. We need a new house. We need a new car. We need new furniture. Fucking A. I need a new life. Christ, I wish I'd never married. The only downside to not marrying is that one misses out on the chance to have and raise kids. Watch them grow, help them, and love them. The upsides, though, Jesus fucking Christ. They far outweigh the downside. Not having to listen to the wife bitch that you didn't do this, didn't take care of that, that she wants, needs, deserves, a new whatever. Not having to put up with a cow who just keeps growing and now wants to move a goddamn mother in. Oh, fuck it. If I start listing all the negatives of my wife and my life... I'll end up hanging myself. Another miserable fuck here. My wife found herself depressed after my son was born. So she has sacrificed sex almost completely so she can be a fucking Zoloft zombie. Dr. Feminazi is only too happy to deal them out. Three years worth. Because sex is not important. Fuck them all. I'm going to continue hiding money. Plot the escape. 
I don't try to split or evenly balance the blame. Some is mine for not listening to my head and getting married at 21. Another portion is mine for not dumping her ass when she changed instantly after getting the ring and the ceremony. But the majority of the blame is hers, not that that fact makes things any better, for dating me for four years and never letting me see the real her and doing such a convincing job of lying to me that I believed it. And of changing the second she got her precious fucking four fucking carat diamond motherfucking ring. She has resisted years of efforts to attend counselling, talk about our dysfunctional relationship in private, try new ideas, you name it. She's a conniving bitch after nothing more but my money who I will hate or expend effort ignoring until the day one of us dies. Jesus, that's grim. I'm married and I hate my life. Gents, most of the worst negatives about marriage posted in this thread are true. Not all of them, but probably over 90%. I'm 35. I've become a closet alcoholic because of my marriage and my spineless self. Vodka, usually with OJ, but sometimes straight, keeps me just numb enough to handle the day. But if I can keep one man from throwing his life down the shitter by convincing them not to get married... I will have redeemed myself. My wife was up at 6 this morning, reading. I got up around 7 and spent the entire day with the kids. As usual, she sat down around 9 and fell asleep in her chair and went to bed. I'm absolutely last on her priority list. She's on every committee in the world, involved in the kids' schools up to her ass, and has basically checked out of the marriage. I'm starting to research how to conceal assets. This is ridiculous. I have to get out. Don't get married. Two years of marriage. I'm depressed and turning to pot and alcohol. I'm not allowed to do anything without permission. I used to live life to the full. Now I just exist to pay the mortgage and fill the shelves full of worthless crap we don't need. Thanks to the joyless fat whore I'm forced to spend the rest of my life with. The day before I got married, I knew in my heart it was not right. Married friends clapped me on the back saying, we all felt that way. It's just nerves. No, it isn't. They wanted me in miserable hell with them is all. Sure enough, she's a whining, insufferable, sexless bitch who hid that side of her personality from me until she got the ring. You may have noticed a recurrent theme here. 11 years. My wife is currently out at a Walmart buying worthless plastic shit. She's 70 pounds overweight. If it wasn't for the kids, I would kick her fat ass to the curb. For me, the ownage is year-round. She doesn't work. I pay for everything. No matter how much money I make, she ratchets up the spending, so we're still living paycheck to paycheck. Kill me now. So that's it for part one. Let me know if you'd like to hear more, or you could simply read it for yourself. Link in the comments. Now, if you found some of the language or portrayals of women disturbing in this video, just remember, men are constantly chided for not opening up and talking more about their emotions and feelings. This is raw, unfiltered male emotion, but I suspect this is not exactly what gender equality activists had in mind. As usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you next time.